All right. Hi. Okay, you know when you were a kid and you had to go and uh, your teacher says you have to get up and give a five, ten minute speech and you're like, how am I going to give talk for ten minutes in front of, a, a, a front of the class? Now I have the opposite problem. I have, I, I, they, they give me 25 minutes and I'm like, how am I going to say all I need to say in 25 minutes? But we're going we're gonna to give it a go. All right, so what comes next? What's beyond APIs? Well, if we look at it, you know, really... When you think about the API economy and when we actually named the API, it really started around 2011 with the RESTful APIs. And I went and looked on the internet one of, to find one of the first sessions that I, that I went to on API, and it was with uh, John Musser. And, and back in May 2011, there was only 3,000 open APIs. And these are the open APIs that you can see. Now, if you go out there today, there's over 20,000 open APIs. And if you look at back in May of 2011, the Billionaires Club, look who's in the Billionaires Club. It's um, Twitter and Netflix and, and Google and Facebook, mostly social media, media, and, and retail. But if you go today to find out who's, in, um, uh, who's making waves with the APIs, it's no longer just social media and, and retail. It's moving way beyond that um, into regulated industries that you thought wouldn't adopt APIs or have open platforms. So today, banking is making great strides in the API economy with open banking platforms. And you also have a copy of this, this um, uh, survey, the Banking um, API State of the Market Report. You all should have got that. And, and what you see here is that in the last, just in the last year, that open banking platforms grew at a 90% rate. That's quite astonishing. So um, just to give you an example of uh, a new type of member joining uh, the Billionaires Club, there's a large bank in uh, Brazil who receives about one-third of their um, Apple Pay transactions through their API. This, the number that I have up there right now, they top six billion. This was in about October time frame. By the end of the year, by the time they get done with November and December, they're going to be up to... 10 billion API calls a month through their API platform. They're also doing some very innovative things, so not just the Apple Pay transactions, so payments going through their APIs. They're, um, they're, they're doing innovative things where they created back in uh, August, they released a WhatsApp payment. So when you're in WhatsApp, you can transfer money to whoever you're talking to through their WhatsApp keyboard. So they're doing very innovative things with APIs um, in the banking industry. So while it's been seven years, when you take a look, and uh, Laura, the previous um, speaker, also had this uh, the adoption cycle with uh, innovators, early adopters, early majority, late majority, and laggards, today I would still say that we are still in the early majority. Even though we've been, it feels like, I know I've been talking about APIs for a long time, and it seems like, well, we've been doing this for a long time, everybody should already be doing it, but we're really still in that state of um, the, the early majority getting adoption of it. So along the way, in the last seven, eight years that I've been working in the API economy and, and helping customers build their API strategies, there's a lot of stops and starts. Some companies that I've worked on are on their third API management try, trying to, try to get that API strategy off the ground, and that's okay. Um, a lot of times where it fails is it's not necessarily the technology, the API gateway or, or the APIs themselves, it's the people and processes around the API strategy that you need to get together and get moving in order to be very successful in your API strategy. That's why at Axway we've partnered closely with StreamData.io and Ken Lane for their um, product journey, which we bring in with our bring that we bring them in to, with us to our customers to really help them understand where they are on the API maturity scale and then help them target the things that they need to, to target in order to make sure that the, this time around on their API strategy they are successful. It's very it's very important to understand where your API maturity is. So one of the key points I want to make is um, APIs are more vital than ever to your digital transformation journey, and it's never too late to start, 
right? And start again, because several of you out there are probably on your, your second or your third try with your API strategy in your organization. So one good thing is if you're just getting started, you have a lot of lessons learned from the rest of us that, are, that, that have started our API journey. Um, our needs have changed over the last seven years. You know, when we first uh, started with the API economy, it was all about the open APIs. It was all about the, a couple handful of APIs that you put out externally. Um, and when we, when we did this, you typically, companies typically had a well-trained team, API team, like the, the, the rowers that are up there, right? It's a very small, dedicated team. They were very knowledgeable. They could hack those APIs out, not hack, but, you know, put really good, powerful APIs out and get the consumption. But now times have changed because now not only are we trying to put APIs out externally, we're really focusing internally and trying to drive that innovation internally. And what happens now is what we have is more like marathon runners, right? You're going to have your extremely well-trained marathon runners that are going to win the race, and then you're going to have those that think that they're well-trained or that they're just dabbling and they just want to, to tackle uh, a marathon for their, you know, 30th birthday or whatever their, uh, their, their goal is. And so when you, when you think about that, going from a well-trained, small, um, dedicated group to a large m marathon of people building APIs, you as an IT organization need to figure out how to control and enable them. So when you think about API management, like I said, initially, API management solutions focused all about the API consumption. How do you get your API adopted? How do you consume it? it focused on portals and API discovery, um, rich API docs, having billing, billing and plans and you know, SDK generators, everything to adopt those APIs. And that was fine and, and, and great and needed um, for when you had that dedicated small team that were the providers. But now that you have marathon providers where you have hundreds of developers, how do you control how your APIs are exposed internally and externally? How do you cater for all hundreds of developers, right, so that they can easily get the APIs into your security and your process and your API portal? How do you ensure that the right policies are applied to your APIs? How do you um, ensure that you have easy registration of the APIs that is into the CICD process? These are all the things you have to start thinking about when, you having, when you're having more than five people contributing to your API economy, to your internal API innovation. So what's happening with these marathon runners was we're really getting to the next generation of application architecture. Customers are either doing this, it either happened organically, which is a very small percent that are mature enough to have this happen organically, or you're doing this by design. So basically, this is what this is called is a mesh app and service architecture where you have a service mesh with multi-grain services from really well-defined, you know, events-based microservices, fine-grain, context-bound, and so forth, to very coarse-grained um, services, right, that, that are, you know, what we traditionally had in, in, in the SOA days. So you have a very big spectrum of services and APIs running in your mesh. And then you typically have a layer of uh, an API orchestration and mediation layer and how you massage the, the APIs together so that they can be consumable on the edge. And when you take a look at a mesh app architecture and service architecture, there's really two directions of traffic, right? There's the, the service to service traffic, which is running in the mesh, which we call the east-west traffic. And there's also the north-south traffic, which is the consumer to service traffic. Now, when you're building a mesh app um, service architecture, you need to be able to control and have visibility across both the north-south traffic and east-west traffic. You need to be able to trace that so when a problem occurs, it doesn't become like a murder mystery. Right? You've all heard about that where when you, you adopted, you broke up your monolithic application into microservices so that every outage becomes a murder mystery. But if you have the proper tools and things in place, it doesn't need to be a murder mystery. You should be able to tr trace all traffic of directions. So, going around the world, working with tons of customers from, from big banks to healthcare companies to insurance, 
um, to telcos. One of the things that is very clear, the companies that are very successful in their API strategy bake it into their CI CD pipeline. And they, they have it completely throughout the whole pipeline from, from design to code to build to plan, redeploy, and so forth. So that's very key when establishing your API strategy. Make sure you think about the whole life cycle and how your developers are actually developing these APIs and embedded into your CI CD pipeline. So when we take a look at it, um, as, as Axway, as we build out our API management and microservice management solution, we take a look at that whole pipeline. And we, we have a philosophy to make sure that our products are not only that we design and build them, not only API first, but CI CD native. So they can be snapped into your CI CD pipeline from design, as I said, all the way through operate and monet monetization and monitor. Now, one of the things that we really believe in with Axway um, is not only do you have to be API first and CICD native, we want the benefit for our customers just that, that the API economy gives you just like you're trying to get. So we partner with best of breed um, partners to snap into our solution via APIs. For example, we, we partner and bundle with our solution Stoplight IO, which is an API design tool. We have partnerships, as I said before, with, um, with uh, Stream Data IO for streaming APIs and their, their um, Kinlane's uh, product, the, the Journey product, Stream Data Journey. And then we have our partners with Ping Intelligence to offer best of breed of API cybersecurity. So when you're taking a look at a solution that you're going to enable your IT with, make sure that solution is CICD native, fits in with your fits in with your CICD pipeline, and allows for you to easily snap in best of breed solutions into it so that you get the full benefit of, of the solution of your solution. This is just our, our architecture of Axway Amplify API management and how we think of it from the build, manage, analyze, and extend layers, right? H controlling, helping you, let me get to the next slide here. Our vision really is API traffic management in all directions, right? Helping you through that whole life cycle from design through runtime and operate and manage that API traffic in all directions in a hybrid multi-cloud. So we're providing a hybrid multi-cloud layer no matter where that traffic is running, if it's running on-premise or up in a cloud somewhere in, in AWS. So our goal really is when you, when you think about you know, establishing your microservice platform and your architecture, we're coming along to help make you taller, to package the maturity of building APIs and microservices in a box. So the lesson learned here from this section was that you know, our needs are changing, our people and processes and technologies need to evolve. We are no longer dealing with just four or five very well-trained API developers and putting it out for consumption. Now in your enterprise, in order to capitalize on the in innovation and to spur your digital transformation, you're dealing with hundreds of API providers, right? You saw the, the orange before, they had over 750 APIs. How do you manage that? How do you get control of it? And how do you enable your develop, development team? Okay. so. To support your business initiatives, as how many here are going through a digital transformation? Their company is going through a digital transformation. Pretty much everybody. Okay. Does anybody know what digital transformation actually means? <laughs> right? um, that, that's a question where I was at a Gartner conference in Vegas, and that's a question that they still get asked a lot. Like, what does digital transformation actually mean? Um, and one good example when talking with an analyst, she goes, she was telling me how a, a tennis racket company, it was a very small tennis racket company, and they were having trouble competing with the, the big, you know, Nikes, and I, I don't know who the, the tennis racket is. I'm not a tennis player. Um, but they were having trouble competing because they were so small. So what they did was truly a digital transformation. They had embedded a chip into their racket so that you could get data off of your swings and start analyzing your, your tennis, you know, your tennis 
swing and to improve. And so they had all this data coming and that was really about the digital transformation. So as you're not a, a, a tennis company, but as you're going through your digital transformation and you're trying to meet your business innovation needs, your IT fundamentally has to shift. It has to move from being a data center delivery um, and an integration factory where everything's very centralized and controlled, where the integration team becomes a bottleneck to, and, and a barrier to innovation, to moving towards where the, the integration team becomes an integration enabler, enabling other people to, in the organization to be able to do the, the integrations and, and be able to be um, a cloud delivery team. That's what's happening in, in IT organizations. Um, so what is that called? You probably heard the term hybrid integration platform. Okay, that's, that's, the, that's the popular thing that, that everybody is now wanting to do so that they can actually turn their integration teams to an integration enabler teams. And so that you can enable your shadow IT because shadow IT is going on. But if you enable your shadow IT, you have more um, security and control over your data and the st stability of your software. Um, we had a product advisory council uh, a couple weeks ago in Vegas as well, and there was uh, one of the members on the, the team says, yeah, their shadow IT is now innovating really fast because they're getting a hold of those APIs and doing very innovative things. And the best thing about them doing it through the APIs is now this IT team has control. They can see who's using it and they can control the data. Whereas before they would grab the, the data, shove it in an Excel, and pass the, the data around and so you had no clue over where your data was going and how to protect it. And so as we evolve from you know, exposing APIs to um, the external world, um, internally and externally, I think we are going to move from having API product management into digital product management. Okay? So your IT, your, your integration teams are now going to be digital product managers. So hybrid integration, just to give you kind of a, 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 a definition of it, um, brings together uh, integration and user enablement. enablement. Now remember the, um, the marathon photo, right, with people running? You're gonna have a whole different spectrum of users, which you can see here up in the personas, from lines of businesses to digital integrators to integration specialists. We need to be able to enable all of those folks in order to, uh, to meet our business needs. We need to be able to com combine a bunch of domains, not only just being able to expose APIs. And typically, when I say APIs, most people think of REST, correct? Just like when I say SOAP, uh, not SOAP, uh, web services, people tend to think of SOAP. But APIs is actually quite, quite broad, um, right? It's application interface, and it could be files and data and, and so forth, just moving. Um, so there's a bunch of different domains that are going to be coming together, which is why I, I think that API product management is going to turn into digital product management, because people tend to think of APIs as only as REST. Um, we're going to be bringing together different endpoints and different architectures, data be, being on REST on the um, on premise or up in the cloud. So hybrid integration is is something that brings all these things together to enable your teams to more rapidly create. Now you can't go out and buy a hybrid integration platform yet. It's something that you need to assemble with your uh, you know best of breed API management and and iPads vendors and, and pull them together. Um, so as we look to the future and as you are building out your digital transformation strategies, as you're transitioning from um, a centralized integration team to becoming integration enablers, what you need to be able to have is the ultimate control center. So you can control that traffic that's running on premise or in the cloud and have a catalog of services and assets that can be used when you combine these things together. So really, um, I thought the, the, the great, a good analogy is really an air traffic control center, as they have to 
manage all of the airplanes and movement of car, not only just of the airplanes, but all of the airline crew cargo stuff that is moving in and out on the ground, but they also have to control what's happening in the sky, so getting that north-south, east-west traffic together. Um, so we're moving beyond API as a product um, to more digital as a product for co-creation. And, and that's what we're going to see in the future, and, and it's going to evolve rapidly, I believe, in the next um, couple years. So if you want to learn how to do traffic management, both of north-south, east-west traffic, I, um, you should, I want you to go to this Axway workshop, Organized Chaos, API and Microservice Traffic Management. It's at 2 o'clock in room, the workshop room 2 and floor 2. So, and then that's, that's all I have. Thank you.